Hello friends, let's discuss today's uh, set of questions on current affairs. The first one relates to a uh, military exercise. Uh, the 18th edition of the India-US joint training exercise named Yudh Abhyas is scheduled to be conducted in uh, Uttarakhand in a place called Auli. In a place called Auli in Uttarakhand. Auli in Uttarakhand. This is about 100 kilometers from the line of actual control, LAC, which is uh, more or less um, de facto, if it's not uh, de jure, it's a de facto boundary line between India and China. So the line of actual control. Now, uh, India and US regularly conduct youth abhyas, and as uh, so you can see, this is the 18th edition. We also have another exercise called named um, Vajra Prahar. Vajra Prahar. So you could look at this. Another US India training uh, military exercise is Vajra Prahar. Okay. And some of those, um, see, um, instead of telling you the names of some other military exercises, which I often do across classes, I would like you to remember one thing, um, note rather than remember, is that here the term Indo-US relates to India and the United States. But if we are looking at, um, if we are looking at the term Indo-China, what could this mean? Usually we would think Indo-China would relate to things between India and China. Well, the truth is quite far different. Indo-China is a region in East Asia. Now we have India, I know Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos and Vietnam and then the Pacific Ocean. So three countries of Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia once till about 1960s formed the British Empire, formed the French Empire. This were, these three were ruled by French government, that is, they were colonies of France. So this region was called Indochina by France. Remember, Indochina relates to three countries, the countries of Laos, Cambodia and Vietnam. Okay, it is not what we normally would think Indochina is about India and China, no. So, slightly different stuff here, okay. To repeat, Indochina relates to the three countries of the region encompassing three countries of Vietnam, Laos, LAOS, Laos and Cambodia. Well, I hope you get that. So, uh, from here we could look at um, the next one. Uh, who won the Google Doodle India contest? That's, um, you know, um, the boy from uh, Calcutta. This is uh, the doodle he drew, India on the center stage. You see this, this is uh, a picture that, in, you know, that showcases uh, um, the old India and with the, the emerging India. You see this yoga, the traditional stuff, but we are good together. We are taking everything together on the path to the future. So, you know, um, sustainability, Tradition and modernity have all come together here. Technology, sustainability, modernity, and uh, you know uh, the past have all come together. Our heritage is reflected in this. You see the pestle and all that. You see this, yeah. So, you know, uh, doodles are a very good way of. Um, celebrating for google it's a very good way of celebrating things like you know if there is a birthday of alexander fleming they have a doodle representing his work so if we have had let's say we landed on the moon in you know um in on 20th july uh some say 21st july depending on what part of the world you are on 20th july 1969 so on around that time there is this doodle come you know celebrating our our um, you know our humankind's feet, uh, um, you know, on the moon. And so, I mean, there are a lot of things that the doodles celebrate. So, it's a pretty simple one, actually. Film director and writer Carlos Sora will be conferred with the Satyajit Ray Lifetime Achievement Award 2022 at the upcoming 53rd edition of the International Film Festival of India in Goa. The International Film Festival of India is always held in Goa. It's a regular, you know, venue. Sora is from, okay, he is, you know, it's mentioned there. Now, I want you to know something, you know, something that um, Carlos Sora has um, 
made a lot of films uh, and uh, chief among them would be Carmen. You could write this. Carmen. This is multi award winning film, Carmen. Then there is this word called, the film called Tango, which is also a kind of dance. Okay. So Carmen, Tango. Then, um, you know, three of his films have been ever nominated uh, in the best foreign film, fe foreign um, feature film category at the Oscars. Foreign feature film. Best foreign feature film category. Okay. Now, I need you to understand that what we send is an entry. Like our country, so you know, you know uh, every year we send a film to the Oscars to be, you know, with the hope that it would win the prize in the best foreign feature film um, category. What we send is an entry. And five of these entries are selected to be nominated, one of which is eventually declared the winner. So we send an entry, okay? Our title, the title we send is an entry. Then of these, five are rated the best selected, and these five are called nominations. And um, one of them is chosen, the you know, chosen to be the winner. Now I want you to understand that Sora has the on has had the honor of three of his films being, you know, nominated in the best foreign feature film category. Yeah, that's that's a great honor, my friends. That's a great honor. Now, um, Carlos, remember, typically Carlos is a Spanish name. Of course, it's also a Portuguese name, but usually it's a you know, it's a Spanish name. Uh, anything related to Spain would be called Hispanic. It should be called Hispanic. Remember this. Anything related to Spain or the language, you know, um, Spanish language is Hispanic. Okay. Now, um, there is something beyond this that we could learn about is this is Satyajitre, master filmmaker of India. He received every possible kind of award and um, two awards I could I mention came in the same year. Just before his death, Satyajitre received the Honorary Lifetime Oscars, Honorary Lifetime Achievement Award, Lifetime Achievement Award, Achievement Oscar, Lifetime Achievement Oscar. And the same year he received the Bharat Ratna, Bharat Ratna. He received the honorary Oscar first, then received the Bharat Ratna. Of course, unfortunately, because of ill health, he could not, um, you know, go in person to receive the Oscar. But um, the great master has been honored in all parts of the world. Yeah. If you have to watch just one, one of his films, just one, I wouldn't suggest the Apu trilogy, Pater Panchali and all. I would suggest... Shatranj Ke Khiladi. Shatranj Ke Khiladi. Very good film. You will thoroughly enjoy it. It shows the decadence of the Nawabs while India was burning, while ordinary people were, you know, were, were grinding in, were living in grinding poverty, dire straits they were. You know, um, the Nawabs were, were spending the time playing chess, you know, in utter decadence. Yeah. All around them, the walls were crumbling, but they were oblivious to, you know, the, the, the destruction of life around them. Identify the correct statements about the 27th edition of the World Population Prospects Report 2020 to the United Nations. Now, there is something about, um, when I mentioned this, the UN, someone said, yeah, United Nations organization. No, no, no. There is no word called organizations. Uh, organization when, it discuss, when you discuss the name UN. Remember, it's not UNO. United Nations Organization, as if United Nations here. Okay, it's a UN. Usually it's used, that's the right term. That's the right term. Usually you said that, you know, called the UNO, but go with the UN always. So this is a little about the population report. And this next year, sometime next year, we'll become the world's most populous nation, the world's most populous nation. And we recently have had the 8 billion person born on this planet. I mean, not 8 billion born on the planet, 8 billion living person. The, today, there are 8 billion people, 800 crore people on this planet, my friends. That's a huge number, my friends. 
Yeah, it took us thousands and thousands of years to come to 100 crores, but from 100 crores to 800 crores, it took us about less than 70 years. That's a large, yeah, pretty fast growth. Uh, you know, all these things are there, but last one is there. The last point talks about the global population growth has fallen below 1% for the first time. This decrease has not been uniform across the world. It's moved, it's different for different, you know, it's been different for different population groups in different parts of the world. Now, I'll tell you a few more things uh, concerning um, this particular, um, uh, you know, uh, report, population prospects report. I want you to write a bit about this population project, you know, uh, prospects report. Um, the number one thing you could write is, um, you know, the TFR, the total fertility rate, TFR, you could write this, TFR. What is TFR? The number of births given by a woman, number of children born to a woman over a lifetime. You could write this. Total fertility rate dash number of children born to a woman number of children born to a woman over lifetime over lifetime over lifetime what is it you go currently you write dash currently 2.3 2.3 of course there's an average 2.3 births is an average you can't have a 2.3 baby isn't it so 2.3 billion, uh, sorry, 2.3 um, births per woman. Now, it is likely to come down to 2.1 by 2050. You could write this dash, may decrease to, or rather will decrease to, not may, will, will decrease to 2.1 by 2050. So fewer children will be born. Next, life expectancy. Life expectancy at birth, at birth, life expectancy at birth, dash, for women, for women, 73.4, no, it's a little above than that, 73.8 years, 73.8 years, Men, 68.4 years. Ah, for men, it's low. Almost five years difference. Yeah, more than five years. So, next. COVID reduced, next point. COVID reduced life expectancy. COVID reduced life expectancy from 72.8 years in 2019 to 71 years in 2021. Yes, yes, it's right. And when I went through the report, I was like shocked to know this. I, trust me, I was deeply shocked. So in just two years, global life expectancy average these men and women it has gone down by two years. That has been the devastating, you know, that such has been the devastating impact of COVID. Yeah, of COVID. So, next, um, you could also write, population of 61 countries. Yes, I remember this. Population of 61 countries is projected to decrease Projected to decrease, projected to decrease by 1% or more, by 1% or more between 2019 to 2050. Why? Dash, you write dash, owing to, owing to, I'm going slow so that you could write, owing to sustained levels of, sustained low levels of fertility, 
sustained low level of fertility low level of fertility i am writing keywords only low level of, of fertility and in some cases and in some cases comma elevated higher you could write higher rates of higher rates of emigration emigration so people moving out higher rates of emigration we could write one more point since i mentioned emigration i remember this uh, now i recall that right next point for 10 nations for 10 nations comma the estimated net flow the estimated net flow of migrants estimated net flow of migrants exceeded 10 lakh 10 lakh between 2010 and 2021 in 2021 next full stop oh you want some data yeah you could write dash india so how many people have left india have emigrated out of india 3.5 million so you could write 35 lakhs 3.5 million instead of million you could write lakh 35 lakh 1 million is 10 lakh 35 lakhs Pakistan one point six five crore. Yes, yes, it's true. One point six five crore. People don't see a better quality of life coming up. So people leave for multiple reasons: better opportunities, better quality of life, safety. You know, um, people who have made uh, money the illegal way, they also want to move out because they fear, um, you know, that um, the government could take back their wealth. So there is increased scrutiny in India as, you know, of wealth earned. You yeah. know, there are multiple reasons why Indians would leave. But when it comes to Pakistanis, of course, you would know that there is, um, there are, there is almost no, you know, great economic opportunity for people, you know, uh, back home in Pakistan. Second, safety is a major issue. Yeah. Increase incidence of terrorism. Yeah. Great deal of political instability. Oh, climate change. Multiple factors, my friends. Okay. So in matter of 10 years, Pakistan has lost 1.65 crore people. Not that the Pakistanis would miss these people because, uh, you know, Pakistan is already the fifth most populated country in the world. Yeah. Crazy. India's CPI, Consumer Price Index, cooled down to 6.77% in October from down from a little under 7.5%. Uh, identify the correct statements regarding CPI inflation in India. Okay, uh, it's this is all about CPI here that you find, uh, you know, it stands for so and so. It tracks the changes in retail prices of that of goods and services households consume. Now, for the second point, I can give you some example what co households consume. What does the basket of CPI commodities have? What does the basket of goods and services in CPI have? Electricity. You could write this electricity. Medical expenses or medical um, care, medical care, comma, education, food, clothing, transportation, transportation. Yeah. Now, all these, these I have given some a few examples. All these are given weightages. All these are given weightages. And a base, particular base year is taken. Base year is an, a year in the past. Now it's about 2015 kind of thing. Yeah. So the base year is taken, and that base year 2012. So that base year on the base on the basis here, how what has been the change in pricing? That is, you know, that is what CPI looks at. Yeah. 
So it's always calculated as a percentage. Always calculated as a percentage in a simple sense. Consumer price index measures cost of living. Cost of living. Okay. So things are pretty bad right now. Globally, they are bad. Uh, so in India, they're equally bad. Yeah. So where does the data come from? You may wonder where does the government collect this data? The government collects this data, you could write this, from 1181 rural markets. 1181 rural markets and 1114, I am giving the exact number, urban markets in 310 towns and cities. Okay, my handwriting is uh, terrible, I know. So the data to calculate CPI comes from 1181 rural markets and 1114 urban markets that are spread across 310 towns and cities. Yeah. So basically things are bad. No. So in a very simple sense, you can say that over last year, very commonsensical way. Okay. If it's 6.77%, you can say that last year, exactly one year back, whatever was you know, the price level over that, there has been a, almost a 7% increase in prices. I'm giving you a simple understanding. It's not so simple anyway. Yeah. Reliance Industries recently backed a 1424 con crore contract, 1424 crore contract to develop India's first multimodal logistics park in Tamil Nadu. Now, you could write this. India is developing, India is developing, 35 multimodal logistic parks multimodal logistics park okay now you may wonder what is multimodal so you could write multimodal underline that right transportation of goods transportation of goods by a single contractor single contractor by a single contractor but with using but with at least but with at least two different modes of transportation two different modes of transportation with at least two different modes of transportation So they could use railways, railways and roadways. They could use waterways and roadways, whatever. Yeah. So the idea is to connect, uh, give last, last mile connectivity to different special economic zones and the ports, you know, markets, all that stuff. Yeah. Which Indian Olympic medalists were among the 10 eminent sports persons elected as um, members of the Athletes Commission of the Indian Olympic Association? Uh, ABCD, yeah. Mary Com, PV Sindhu, Mirabai Chanu, Gagan Narang. Um, I want you to write a bit about Miss MC Mary Com. Padma Vibhushan, Padma Vibhushan. 2020, Padma Vibhushan 2020, next, only boxer, only boxer, male or female, only boxer to win 8 world championship medals, 8 world championship medals, next, only female boxer, only female boxer to win six world amateur championships. Six world amateur championships. That's a lot, my friends. Yeah. It's a world record. Next. Right. Gagan Narang. I will not tell you about all. Just Gagan Narang. We often have been discussing names like Vinira Chopra and P.V. Sindhu. So let's look at 
the names that we usually don't discuss. Gagan Narang, um, what is it? Bronze medal winner, bronze medal shooter, bronze medal winning shooter, bronze medal winning shooter at at 2012 Summer Olympic Games. 2012 Summer Olympic Games. That is 2012 would be London. Yeah, London. 2012 Summer Olympic Games. Mm, he would receive the 2010 Kail Ratna Award. Kail Ratna Award. Major Dhyan Chand Kail Ratna Award. India's highest sporting award for individual excellence. Major Dhyan Chand Kail Ratna Award 2010. 2010. Yes, one name we should know about is Karnam Maleshwari. Karnam Maleshwari. You could write this. Karnam Maleshwari. First Indian woman, first Indian woman medal winner, first Indian woman medal winner at Olympic Games, at Olympic Games. Wrestling branch, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. The great Karnam Maleshwari, I'm, you know, I think I misattributed her to I'm, I misattributed the sport to her. This is, she was a great weightlifter. Weightlifter, bronze at 2000 Summer Olympic Games. That was, I think, Sydney. 2000 Summer Olympic Games. Summer Olympic Games. Hmm. Natasha Pierre Musa was recently elected the first female president of Slovenia. This is Slovenia. You can see it here. Yeah. You see this. All these were former they were members of the previous uh, what we say um, uh, Yugoslavia. This is all Yugoslavia. This country was Yugoslavia. Sorry. Sorry, all this was Yugoslavia. Hmm? This is Yugoslavia. And you need to understand something that the, the country of Yugoslavia broke up and the constituent states became separate countries. Slovenia was the first, you know, republic, first province in Yugoslavia to break away, to break away. This is a human rights activist and she is, uh, she's, uh, you know, she's recently been elected female president, but it's a parliamentary democracy. So, you know, it's a country that where, you know, the prime minister is uh, head of the government while the head of the state is a president. So you could write about Slovenia. You can see the capital here, Jubjana. This is the capital, Jubjana. Anyway. This is the capital, Jibjana. Prime Minister is PM, Robert Golob. Robert Golob. Currency, Euro. Currency, Euro. Yeah, Euro. Currency is Euro. Next, Croatia. See this country in yellow here. Hmm, let me clean this, clear this. See, this is Croatia. You see these islands here. If you go look at a detailed map of Croatia, you'll find that these islands here are all, you know, they are, these islands are called Dalmatia. The islands are called Dalmatia. And this region, Dalmatia, has given birth to the dog breed Dalmatian. You find spots on the dock. 
the white dog with black spots or some people would say it is actually black dog with white uh, you know <laughs> with uh, white patches you never know what is it actually it's actually a white dog with um, <laughs> i know it's actually a white dog with black patches so croatia's capital is zagreb this is a capital okay and um, its prime minister is peter fiala that's the prime minister and the currency is kuna kuna k u n a kuna i think i made an error i went take, i took it to czech republic yeah because i jumbled things in my mind i think <laughs> uh the currency i got right yeah the pen i needed mm -hmm. the name of the prime minister is it's croatia no croatia is andrej plenkovic andrej plenkovic yeah andrej plenkovic czech republic this is czech republic this was all one country czechoslovakia this is the country that was invaded by adolf hitler in 1939 that set off the second world war okay czech republic you can see the capital is prague and petrofiala prime minister and the currency is koruna koruna hmm yeah hungary i think we discuss in the recent past but anyway the prime minister here is that is the capital budapest you can see the capital budapest and the prime minister is viktor orban the rebel in the uae uh, in the european union viktor orban and the currency is forint forint italy we discussed recently so yeah the world heaviest sorry highest polling station in tashigang recorded 100% voter turnout in the recently conducted elections it's in uh, himachal pradesh himachal pradesh this is um, said to be this is on the border with china lac and uh, this is ladies and gentlemen china claims this as its own you should know this okay but of course it's arts you know himachal pradesh uh, the prime said the chief minister is jairam thakur let's just look at simple things now jairam thakur and it has two capitals one is shimla the other is dharamshala dharamshala okay let's not discuss capitals sikkim prem singh tamang prem singh tamang t a m a n g ladakh lieutenant governor is radha krishna mathur hmm. jammu and kashmir hmm. uh, i think it's manoj sinha manoj sinha mizoram zoram khanga is the chief minister manoj zoram khanga ah beautiful temple indian vice president jagdeep dhankar and cambodian prime minister hun sen met recently in this context which are the following uh, okay all of them See, this is cambodia i was talking about yeah i did not even remember that you know this map was there this is this was indo china okay you know china let me clear this and draw a, but simple thing this is indo china this was the french empire okay cambodia is said to be named after a brahman prince named kamboja okay 
And, um, you know, this is a temple dedicated to Bhagwan Vishnu. Bhagwan Vishnu, this Angkor Wat, this temple is called, I'll write it here, Angkor Wat is the name of the temple. This was built between, you know, um, 1115 to 1145 by a guy called, by the Khmer King. Khmer is a main ethnic group in Cambodia. Khmer King uh, Surya Varman II. Surya Varman II. Okay. This was not like this when the French discovered it. It was in shambles, in the weeds, everything. I mean, a lot of these buildings were you know, broken and everything. The French Archaeological Association uh, organization, they rebuilt some of this. Think about it. When it would have been built about 900 years back, when life was very different, it was all a jungle, what it would have been like? Yeah, it's dedicated to Bhagwan. Vishnu. The tales of Mahabharata could be found on the on the temple walls, chiseled, sculpted. Yeah. So you will also find this um, in um, this picture in this film called Tomb Raider, starring Angelina Jolly. Hun Sen is the Prime Minister of Cambodia. He has been in power since 1985. Can you believe that? He is more or less a dictator. Yeah. It's a constitutional monarchy. There is a Raja here called Norodom Siomani, but he is the power center. Maybe in the next class, I'll tell you the story of Cambodia's Khmer Rouge. Yes, I will definitely tell you this story. I'll bring this question back. Khmer Rouge was a terrorist organization, communist terrorist organization, which led to the deaths of thousands, not thousands, about 32 lakh people in this country in four years. I'll tell you that story. Yeah. Identify the correct statements about the 41st Indian International Trade Fair held recently. All of them, all of these are right. The trade fairs, um, um, you know, uh, Theme was vocal for local and local to global. That's what the Prime Minister of India has been saying. Okay. So there's hardly anything for me to discuss here, considering that everything's men already mentioned. Janjatiya Gaurav Divas is observed on November 15th every year to mark the birth anniversary of the great Birsa Munda. Birsa Munda belonged, of course, he belonged to the Munda tribe in Jharkhand. Um, you know, um, he led the Munda rebellion against um, uh, land encroachment uh, and land policies of the British government. He also rebelled against the Christian missionaries. So, Birsa Munda's name is immortalized, of course, in the you know India's freedom struggle. His name is also the name of the Ranchi International Airport. The Ranchi International Airport is named after Birsa Munda. Birsa. Munda. Yeah. You know, this is in Jharkhand. Yeah. Uh, Ran Ranchi is the capital of Jharkhand. November 15th is also the year, um, is also the day in 2000, uh, year 2000, when Jharkhand was created. Yes, this is Jharkhand Statehood Day. You yeah. know, which country created history by winning their second T20 World Cup men's title? England. Write this. T20 World Cup. 2022 T20 World Cup. Right. Host. Simply write this. Host. Australia. Host dash Australia. Next. Winner. England. England. Next. Runner up. Pakistan, next, um, player of the series, player of the series, Sam Curran, Sam Curran, C-U-R-R-E-N, 
of England. He took a record number of wickets. He did a great all-rounder job actually. Sam Curran. Next. Most wickets. Most wickets. Most wickets. Vanindu Hasaranga. Sri Lanka. Vanindu Hasaranga, Sri Lanka. Next. <clears throat> Most runs. Most runs. Virat Kohli. Virat Kohli. Virat Kohli. Virat Kohli. Uh, I think that should be fine. Next, right. 2024. World Cup venues. T20 World Cup venues. 2024. West Indies. And US. Yes. Two countries. West Indies and US. 2026. Sri Lanka and India. India. Mm. That should be good. All that you should know is here. Prime Minister Narendra Modi recently dedicated the Ramgundam Fertilizers and Chemicals Corporation Limited to the nation. This is in Telangana, my state Telangana, uh, in which the government of Telangana has 11% equity stake. But you could write this RFCL joint venture between joint venture between one National Fertilizers Limited, National Fertilizers Limited, National Fertilizers Limited, net comma Engineers India Limited, Engineers India Limited. And one is NFL, EIL, Engineers India Limited, and Fertilizers Corporation of India, Fertilizer Corporation of India Limited, Fertilizer Corporation of India Limited, FCIL. Okay. Next. What is the name of India's first privately developed and launched rocket? In fact, it's just been launched already because this is a particular period in the past. Um, the name of the rocket was Vikram S. So why don't you write this? Subheading, India's first private rocket launch. India's first private rocket launch. India's first private rocket launch. Okay, underline that. One. Um, launched by, launched by, launched by Skyroot Aerospace. Skyroot Aerospace. That's the name of the company. Skyroot Aerospace. Dash, right, dash. Skyroot Aerospace, dash. Winner of Winner of 2020 National Startup Awards. Startup Award. Winner of winner of 2020 National Startup Award. Next. Founded by Skyroot Aerospace, that is. Founded by Pawan Kumar Chandana. Pawan Kumar Chandana and Nag Bharat Deka. No, not Deka, Daka. Nag Bharat Daka. 
B A K A. Next, see so this guy is the C E O and the C T O, and this guy is the Chief Operating Officer. Pawan is the Chief Technology Officer and the Chief Executive Officer, while Bharat is the Chief Operating Officer. Next, launched Vikram One. Launched Vikram One rocket. Vikram One rocket dash. Named after. Named after. Vikram Sara Bhai. Vikram Sara Bhai. Comma. Father of India Space Program. Father of India Space Program. Father of India Space Program. Next. On board. Next point. On board. On board. Vik Vikram One rocket. Or you could simply put it. Simply write, write Vikram One rocket was fitted with was fitted with Raman engine. Raman engine named after named after Chandra Shekara Venkata Raman C V Raman Chandra Shekara. Venkata Raman Chandra Shekara Venkata Raman comma 1930 Nobel Physics Laureate 1930 1930 Nobel Physics Nobel Physics Laureate L A U R E A T Laureate Hmm. Okay. Laureate. So you can look at something more here. Um, I want you to write this also. Um, ISRO. Just write this. Is or uh, rocket was launched from rocket was launched from rocket was launched from. Rocket was launched from Satish Dhawan Space Center. Satish Dhawan Space Center. Satish Dhawan Space Center. At Sri Harikota. At Sri Harikota. At Sri Harikota. Okay. At Sri Harikota. Next, I think that should be fine now. Yeah. Mm. Satish Dhawan is uh, a uh, former chairperson of ISRO, my friends. Mm. He's a former, he's a chair, former chairperson of ISRO. Who claimed his first Formula One victory after winning the 2020 Sao Paulo Grand Prix at Interlagos? George Russell of Mercedes. He's a British guy. George Russell, British. And um, the second place guy, uh, second place went to Lewis Hamilton, third to Carlos Sainz. It, two, three, four are mentioned in the same order, my friends. Okay. Two, three, four. Or basically, they finished one, two, three on the podium. Okay. This guy belongs to Spain, UK. Both of them belong to UK. Okay. But the 2022 Formula One World Championship has been won by Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen of Netherlands. Netherlands. Okay. He drives for Red Bull team. Red Bull Racing. Red Bull. In fact, he is also the 2021 winner. So he defended the title. Yeah. Chala. Which Nobel laureate of Indian birth was recently awarded the prestigious order of merit by King Britain's King Charles III in recognition of his distinguished service to science? Venki Ramakrishna, uh, 2009 Nobel chemistry winner. 
you could i don't want you to write nobel prize winner of chemi in chemistry no simple nobel chemistry 2009 nobel chemistry now i want you to know a little about him the most important thing is that you know um he did his bsc where this the, the look at the education journey the work journey in a nutshell i'll tell you he you know um was born in tamil nadu chidambaram i think a place called chidambaram tamil nadu uh, he did his bsc from uh, baroda uh, maharaj sayaji gaikwad college i guess and then he went to the us where he did his phd and um, phd was in physics the phd was in physics fair okay? then for a couple of years he studied um, a few things in biology and then he became a biologist and in 2009 he won the nobel prize in chemistry for his study of ribos ribosomes and all that yeah see uh, i look at this bsc then phd phd in what physics then studied to be a biologist and then he won the nobel prize in chemistry of course it's you know molecular biology and everything but think about it i mean look at the work people do the kind of you know the kind of hard work people do my friends look at the name of the second person cnr rao chintamani nagesa ramachandra rao chintamani nagesa ramachandra rao um has practically won every award except the nobel prize now this uh, scientist received the 2014 bharat ratna as well 2014 bharat ratna three scientists have received the bharat ratna one 1955 i think it was 19 yeah 1955 uh, sorry so sorry 1954 c v raman chandrashekar venkata raman and um, 1997 if i'm not wrong yeah 97 apj abdul kalam apj abdul kalam and 2014 cnr rao so much for such hard work yeah it's an amazing thing he holds dual citizenship us and uk us and uk switzerland won their first billy jean king title billy jean king cup title uh, after a, okay fair um it's associated women's tennis women's tennis i wanted to write a bit about this billy jean king cup okay previously called fed cup between 1995 and 2020 yeah 2020 2020 now again yeah reverted to the old name reverted to the old name now reverted to old name what is this championship you could write this highest or number 1 premier otherwise premier international premier international team competition premier international team competition in in women's tennis in women's tennis women's tennis women's tennis dash men's equivalent men's equivalent davis cup davis cup okay so 2022 winner twenty twenty two winner switzerland runner up australia host glasgow in scotland england that is scot not england scotland uk uk okay Name the seventh edition of the bilateral air exercise between the Indian Air Force and the French Air and Space Force that took place at the Air Force Station in Jodhpur, Garuda. 
मित्र शक्ति इंडिया एंड श्रीलंका एस एल गर्व शक्ति इंडोनेशिया सिंपल क्वेश्चन एक्चुअली नोमाडिक एलिफेंट मंगोलिया वज्र प्रहार यूएस यूएस Name the structured exercise recently conducted by the Indian Navy to evaluate the organizational effectiveness in protecting offshore assets of Mumbai. O F F of Mumbai, away from Mumbai. Now, what are the assets in the sea? Uh, we have Bombay High. Or it's called Mumbai High. Mumbai, Bombay High, or Mumbai High. This is an oil plant, you know, oil rig uh, owned by the government of India. O N G C S asset. So. There is a well, oil well in the Arabian Sea. The rigging platform is called, I think the rigging platform is called Sagar Samrat. The well is called Bombay High, owned by ONGC. The rig, rigging, uh, the rig platform is called Sagar Samrat. So in case there is a war or some kind of hostility that breaks out or some kind of an emergency, how well equipped is the Indian Navy to protect these assets? That's why that is what the exercise was about, you know. So they did a great job. You know, that's that's our idea basically. So how well will we be able to protect our assets that are away from the coast? Which of the following institutions? These are also called Bretton Woods twins. One and two. That would be World Bank and International Monetary Fund. See, in nineteen. In July 1944, a conference was held, you know, uh, of 43 nations. 43 nations met at a place called Bretton Woods in the American state of New Hampshire. New Hampshire is on the east coast of US, up almost on the border with Canada, about New York. So they met at a place called Bretton Woods. And they decided that they will set up three organizations, but only two came real. I mean, two were set up. Okay. One was World Bank. The other is the International Monetary Fund. The primary reasons behind setting up these organizations was to rebuild the shattered economies, the destroyed economies and infrastructure that, you know, that, that saw massive destruction in the Second World War between 1939 and 45. So, you know, uh, these organizations were set up, the, uh, you know, because they were set up in the same, they were res, they were the result of, of, of a single conference and they were born, B-O-R, and born in the same conference. They together are called the Bretton Woods Twins. Bretton Woods Twins. So remember, Bretton Woods Twins are two because they were born in the same conference. They are called Twins. World Bank and IMF. They also proposed the setting up of another organization called the ITO, International Trade Organization. That didn't become real till, till the setting up of the World Bank, World Trade Organization on 1st January 1995. Okay. So even the WTO is a part of the World Bank system, it's typically called the UN system or the World Bank system. Okay.